All right, let's roll. I'm re-recording this because yesterday when, uh, well, I've ended up having more than 30 minutes of video. I hope I can keep it short at this time. Okay, so um, this is how my project has started. The website that you're seeing is called patadap.com. Uh, I will show you quickly how it works. So basically any uh, key press on the keyboard will generate a sound and will also generate some kind of animation. But the guy behind this project is quite a good uh, designer and his animations are much better than mine. Also a side note is that I have used a different animation library for this. I have used um, paper.js and he, I think he uses uh, Greenstock here. Green stock or green sock. Uh, I have no clue, but anyway, you know probably what I'm talking about. Uh, there are a couple of letters. As you see, his uh, animations are way more advanced. Uh, and this is the same functionality in terms of um, changing the sound set. Let me just close the window. So it's quite loud because passing by. Okay, so when I press space, the color changes a bit and the sound I'm making are different. The animations remain the same, but um, their colors change as well. Okay, um, let me show you the third one. Yep, there's quite quite a lot of fun stuff going on here. So uh, imagine my surprise when uh, I found this course. Uh, I'm by no means advertising it or anything, but uh, look here. Section 19, optional project, patatap clone. So when I've seen that and uh, Udemy had it on sale for 10 bucks, I jumped at the opportunity and I believe this is a good way to do it. Uh, I mean, whenever you're wondering whether or not you should spend a little or whatever you can afford at educational resources, I say go for it because this uh, it has been proven that it facilitates your learning experience. You just treat the projects way more seriously and uh, well, you, you basically feel that you're wasting something if you're not working on it. So as you see, I, I've, I'm i quite deep in that course already and I've been having a blast. I will show you uh, what the project, the final project from this course looks like. It's here, okay? So uh, the functionality is way simpler than mine. It basically um, reads for keystrokes, it waits for keystrokes, and then uh, it generates a circle which um, gets smaller on each frame of the animation and it can generate a sound as well. We were using Paper.js and Howler.js for uh, these functionalities. So let me show you how it works. There's A, L, E, O, M. The um, starting point for the circle is generated randomly. I will explain that later when we're talking about the code. And um, it can show wherever on the screen, okay? Um, there are some simple concepts here, and I will explain them as well. And there is no sound set change here, so when I press space, nothing actually happens. Oh, something happened, but um, I don't know if you've noticed it here. I don't know what's up, but <laughs> anyway, uh, there's just one sound set, so it's a bit simpler. Here you can see my project, my final one, uh, it's a bit more complex. Here's the instruction, you can find it at uh, J-A-D-C-Z-A-K-D. Uh, dot github io slash pat a keyboard all right uh, the code is there as well if you don't want the live version so let's hide the instructions um basically when i uh, what you're seeing at the top and here this is the sound table and this is where we want to put the sounds that we like and then loop them with the start button start button and stop button work already for those who have seen my previous video and um well i made the interval work finally. Uh, let me give you a sample. So there's H, there's K, there's K, there's L, there's O, there's P. Uh, I'm sorry about the lag, but uh, my computer is not really uh, good for recording video. Um, so as you've seen, uh, there is way more shapes. I believe I have six shapes predefined right now. Uh, they're looped through, but we'll get deeper into that when, when I show you the code. And what you can do is so you can also click uh, some of well, some all of those letters here in this um, digital keyboard, and this will translate it uh, onto a sound path for this tile here that is marked with the red dashed border. Okay, uh, let me show you how it works. Let's see. Uh, we press an uh, um, H button, H, and the sound. Let's say that we like it. We can uh, put it into this box, 
and uh, once our loop starts, it will generate the sound. Uh, I've incorporated uh, the functionality of sound set changes as well from the path up that you've seen in the beginning. So whenever you press space, the color changes, uh, the background color changes a little bit, and the sound changes as well. Sound, uh, all the sounds change. Okay, so not only the eight sound changes, all the sounds, all the sounds and the sounds, and there's 26 of them. Uh, let me press H again. Boom. Uh, as you see, um, this is sort of a code that I'm using here. There is AH and BH. So H is clearly the letter that we're using. A is the name of the sound set. I've got six sound sets. Let me uh, show you the next one. There is CH, there is uh, DH, there is EH, and there is FH. Okay, then we go back to white and it's going back to being white. Um, this is how it works, basically. I will uh, explain you why I'm having these letters there uh, when we're looking at the code. Uh, let me press the start button just quickly. Okay, so uh, the blue color that you're seeing is... Oh, what? No. Let me try again. Oh, okay. Uh, I have to fix that. Apparently, when the... Uh, current row indicator is full, it will not reset everything because uh, the numbers change um, in a different spot. We, you have me debug it as I record. Uh, okay, so this was the current row indicator. I wanted to uh, clearly show which sounds are being played uh, at the incident moment. Um, it's a bit misleading because some sounds are actually longer than the interval that is set right now. I believe it's 400 milliseconds or maybe it's longer. And um, they resound after um, the interval has gone to the next square already. Uh, but this is what I wanted. So um, it works fine for me. Uh, you can also navigate the uh, squares so you can correct your mistakes by using the physical keyboard arrows. Okay, so when I press left, it goes here. When I press left, it goes here. When I press down, it goes one row lower, and so on and so forth. Uh, when we are at the end, look, it, oh, this should be fixed as well. This shouldn't go here. It should actually go uh, to this one. But uh, on all the others, I believe it should be working properly. Oh, no, I have to fix that as well. Uh, so um, will you help me get that done? when we're looking at the code. So uh, this is it for now. This is what I have. Um, I'm working on a couple of details, but you can see them in the instructions if you want. And let's jump to the code now. Let, uh, I have to switch windows, so uh, let me do that. OK, um, first things first, uh, I will make a separate video on uh, all the plugins plugins, whatever. I'm using for Chrome because they are quite useful. There's a web server there, there, there's the highlighter, there's this screen recorder. This is just a Chrome pl plugin. And uh, probably people will want to have this in their Sublime as well. You see this is a cor color highlighter. I can show you uh, lower it works as well for any hex color and I believe any other color as well. Uh, okay, let me jump right into that. I didn't want to clean up the code because before you've seen it, uh, so I'm just going with the way it is. The only thing I've done is uh, I, I added a new line here. So uh, if you look at the original code, it's all in one line. I wanted to keep it short. I, I made sure it's spelled properly anyway, so I didn't need that. Okay, uh, so there are things here that shouldn't be here anymore because I haven't cleaned that code, as I've said, and we will be cleaning that on the go. Uh, current set I. This is a way uh, to navigate through uh, this array, and this is helpful uh, for making the new URLs for the sound files, okay? Because they are generated from a function. Uh, you can see the function here. This is just for a singular file, but uh, it's later on used uh, to look through all the files in an object that you will see down below uh, in a second. And it generates all of them um, based on the target. Target is basically the key uh, uh, because it will use uh, this sound file names as well. Uh, but let, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's go. It, one by one. So whenever you press space, it will change the um, array index of this set to the next one. Um, the function is a bit lower. And um, the, the regenerate basically the URLs for the sound files. Okay, So uh, these are just the names of the sounds that I'm using. Uh, they're fairly simple. 
<laughs> here you can see the background colors. Um, the background is actually a canvas. You, uh, we will get to see it later on. I haven't used canvas much besides this project, but I know it's uh, quite useful for drawing and for simple games. Uh, you can do quite a lot with it. This letters array is fairly uh, straightforward. I will uh, tell you why it's there when we get to the function that uses it, actually. Okay, so generate howl is a function that uh, makes the path for the sound file. Okay, so this is what it returns. It doesn't actually generate the whole sound. It just generates the uh, URL that it uses to, um, well, to playback the sound for us. Uh, the shape. Uh, I'm using very simple logic to look for the shapes. There are six of them predefined, and uh, depending on the number that we have here, which is incremented later and it jumps from six to one at some point, or from seven to one, okay, uh, the shapes will change. So there is a circle, there is a triangle, there is a square, there is a pentagon, and there is a hexagon, I think, or maybe there are more. Uh, here you can see the key. Uh, well, the object that is full of, um, well, sound file names. So each letter has a sound file assigned. Uh, this sound set that I'm using uh, uses the same uh, names for each of the files. And if I wanted to add uh, any, any new files, I would just use the same name so that I, I don't have to add more code to it. So uh, this is very boring. And there you go. It ends here. Key data. Key data is a way uh, that I have started this whole um, object using. And uh, here is where the actual howls are. Don't, don't uh, be afraid if, if you're not familiar with the structure, because this comes from the uh, Howler.js library. Yeah, it generates a new howl, which is basically a sound file, and it plays it. There, there are many, many uh, options that you can set with Howler. Uh, you can speed it up, you can make the volume higher, and this is what I'm going to use later on when I add a, a little more functionalities to this project. And um, this color here is used to uh, generate the shape that you're getting when you press any given key. So any, any key you're pressing is getting different uh, shape color. Okay, uh, I'm just, um, I will show you the original file from the course that I, I have shown you already. So um, they've used a little different approach, um, way simpler because you uh, basically type, well, paste probably, uh, all the uh, key data here as an inline script. And I believe that's very, very wrong. So uh, I've had to find a way to do it differently. And uh, just as a side note, this looks uh, very similar. But um, the way I make my project, I, I make sure that I rewrite it myself. So um, well, probably rewrite is not the proper word. But basically, after I was done with uh, making this project, I have cleared the files. And then I, without using this, um, course videos, I recreated it myself because otherwise I just feel that I'm cheating and uh, that I'm not doing le any learning actually. Okay, so uh, if you compare the colors, for example, the colors are different. The sound names are the same. Uh, I've also managed to find a, a typo here, which I've informed them about, but whatever. Uh, pay attention to detail, basically, especially if you're making people pay for, for your products because this is... Uh, a very bad review right now. <laughs> uh, okay, let's go a bit lower. Let's keep this um, letter object. Um, as you see, at first, it generates. It uses the the function that we we've seen above to generate the um, sound path accordingly to the letter that it represents. But look at Q. I have forgotten about it. Look this. Is basically what, what's happening there, and it uh, the functionality is the same. This works as well. I have overlooked that. I uh, haven't changed that, and let's leave it like that for now because it well it works. Okay, so uh, you have to remember about this. This one side note: whenever you're making an URL uh, into a folder, uh, you have to remember about the slashes. That that happens to me very often. That I uh, keep wondering why my URLs don't work. And it's because I don't put the slashes anywhere there. OK, uh, let's draw a bit lower. There you go. Uh, as you see, this is, um, I think this is clear naming. Net next set generates the next uh, sound set uh, for us. It changes some of the 
um, some of the indexes. This is uh, one of the indexes that we don't want to use anymore. I'm just seeing it now. And um, basically, uh, this if statement is here because uh, there's a limited number of um, entries in the array that we're using to loop through the sets. So whenever it reaches the maximum uh, array index, it has to go back to zero. And uh, that's why uh, this if statement is here. Otherwise, it will just increment or um, or decrement. But uh, this is also not being used in the program anywhere. So right now, we uh, don't really care about it. Uh, these are the functions that you've seen before. So uh, they should be clear for now. OK, uh, look here. I'm using a bit different uh, looping pattern here for uh, key and key data, keys data, sorry. But you should be all familiar with that. So uh, generate all howls is what happens actually in this function. Uh, it uh, is generating. Oh, I'm a bit repetitive here because this is what, what, what's happening there. And um, this is fairly straightforward. It's all about generating the URLs. There's nothing difficult about that. Set color canvas, which is targeted somewhere below. As you see, my um, files are really messy. And there is an inline file here, which I know should be changed. So this is another side note to me. Um, by the way, I totally recommend everyone to make these videos, even if you don't share them with others. Because uh, once you record it, uh, as you see, I, I can catch a lot of mistakes, little, tiny little details that uh, can make a huge difference when you're showing it to someone. And uh, I believe this this ability to spot these differences and, and be able to correct your code while you review, um, well, it's quite an important thing to have. Um, OK, let's go back to the code. Current cell, this is um, what I use to navigate through the sound table itself. And uh, the table that you've seen where, where we've put the, uh, where the code for the sound uh, path goes when you click the on-screen keyboard, OK? Remove active, this uh, removes the, um, sorry, uh, removes the red um, dashed border and uh, this one actually adds the red dashed border. Uh, I'm having an indicator here because I'm using a free version uh, of the Chrome extension and uh, that I should stop talking uh, to you now. So let, let me stop it. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay, we are back at it again. Uh, so um, you can see that my uh, variable naming is clearly not following any logic. Sometimes I'm using, using shortcuts, sometimes not. This is just uh, something that should be probably on top, because uh, right now we are 230 lines deep in the code, and you can see uh, well, just a variable defined, but um, it's elevated there anyway. Uh, this array is here simply to make sure that we don't keep all the shapes, not circles, don't be misled by its name, uh, in the memory. So whenever a shape is getting too small to be displayed anymore, it will soon um, it will disappear. It will be, be split for, from the array and it will cease existing. Okay, so um, this is uh, where the letters array or object, I think it's uh, array. Let's, let's just make sure. Pick. And this is an array. Okay, so where the letters array comes into play. So if um, the event key yeah. So if, if the uh, event key of the of any key that you can press on your keyboard is within this array, it will uh, generate uh, a shape. Okay. This is this is the whole code for the shape generation. It's quite long and probably very repetitive, but um, I made sure I, I I put this here to make sure that it doesn't uh, throw any errors when you press, for example, backspace or enter or any key that is not defined here. OK, uh, we'll go back to it in a second. Let's go, uh, go lower in the loop. Then uh, there are a lot of if else statements here. So uh, if spaced and things happen, uh, then the next ha set happens, actually. If down, uh, things happen and uh, you have to make sure that this is here. Uh, because uh, you make to uh, you you make sure this way that if you go to the lowest row in the sound table, it will jump back on the top one. OK, 
Okay, so once we reach the bottom, we go back to the first one. This is uh, just a very simple iteration uh, through this um, two elements array, which I use as a um, x, y axis to navigate from my sound table. Okay, and this all follows the same logic. So there are different numbers here. The magic numbers stand for the amount of cells, basically, and the uh, amount of columns uh, horizontally. Yeah. And the lower number, the three, uh, zero to three, is for the amount of rows. Right? Uh, let's go back to the um, generator of the shapes. Okay. So once we make sure that the key that we pressed is actually a letter, uh, that's based on this. So uh, if it's a letter, it will return more than zero because this will return the index of the element in this array of letters. All the letters are there, uh, well, all the letters from the English alphabet. And um, it will generate the max point. So max point, this, this is um, the max, it's generated for, from the max view size. So it uh, will never exceed your viewport, no matter if you're on a mm, mobile phone or on a tablet size device, or uh, no matter whether your um, screen is horizontal or vertical, and this will work. And it required another trick uh, to be used in the HTML. Uh, if I don't forget about it, I will... Um, Put it in the video as well. The random point and generates uh, the well random point for, for the uh, element that we want to use, and uh, we make sure that the random point is within the um, max viewpoint. Okay, so uh, this this is how it actually happens. It's a, a bit more complex. If you want to go in detail, of that uh, I can go uh, with another video, but I believe this. This should be straightforward. It, it's actually simple maths. It, it might be a bit complicated to process because there are so many points generated here, but it's uh, there. Anyway, uh, it's, it's very simple. Okay, uh, so uh, here, if the shape, which is uh, the, the, the variable that was uh, established back up there, is one, we will generate a new regular polygon with three points. Okay, and it will start at this point. And uh, it's very, very straightforward. This is uh, the syntax from paper.js. Okay, so uh, if you're not familiar with any of that, it's probably because this is not plain JavaScript, it's paper.js. This is the animation library that I'm using. And it increment, increments the shape number. It goes on for uh, any of the numbers that are possible. And if you look here, this is again my super simple logic. Uh, if we reach the maximum number, so this is the number of the shapes that we have, we want to put the shape back at one. Why one? Because the first shape we start with is one. So uh, it depends on what uh, kind of rules you follow. You you can go with the um, array indexing order, or you can start at one. I, I believe it varies from person to person where we start counting at. Uh, okay, let's go a bit lower. So here is what happens on each frame. Okay, and this is part of Paper.js as well. So um, basically, um, each frame. Um, Circles, don't be misled, are just the shapes. Okay, so uh, on each frame, the fill color hue will be incremented a little bit. Uh, I've put it to three to make it a little more trippy than the other um, than the the other uh, file you've seen, and then the um, project that I have begun with. And uh, here we can scale it down. It's really super simple. I, I totally recommend using this library. Amazing things can be done on it. Uh, and just just browse their showcase. It's, it's really, it will blow your mind. Uh, I am always uh, rotating it, which is quite uh, useless for the circles, if you think of it. I mean, rotating a circle, yeah. Why would you do that? But uh, with all other shapes with the triangle, the square, the hexagon, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it is visible and it adds a little nice effect. And um, as you see here, if the area of any given shape is less than three, I believe it counts in pixels, uh, it will just remove the uh, circle from the array. Okay, and let's go a bit lower. 
letters. K letters is um, just the keyboard on the screen, and uh, I'll make sure that I'm adding a um, key event listen, listener, and I'm uh, filling the table cell. Oh, this is a proper name for the function. Uh, the sound table is just the whole thing, okay? Uh, all the four lines are within this sound table selector that you can see here. Okay, let's, let's go into a field ta uh, table cell. Um, this basically uh, takes the sound that we are pressing now and it puts the um, set that is currently active as the first letter and then it puts the um, letter that is pressed as the second letter into that span. These are spans, uh, all of them uh, up there. And um, yeah, that's basically what happens. And um, again, the, the same logic. If we hit nine in the columns, we have to go back to zero and um, we have to change this basically a little bit. Um, this active cell, you've seen it up there and it should be fairly straightforward. Current sound. Current sound is the indicator for uh, the column. I believe. I'm not actually sure if I need it, but um, apparently at the moment of writing, I thought I do. Um, in here, this is very repetitive and I bet it can be done simpler, but I didn't want to uh, correct anything before I thrown it to you. Um, I mean, I, from my perspective, this, this uh, project has given me a lot and I uh, learned a lot and I'm still learning way more. So um, follow any projects that you have in mind, seriously. Even if you think at first that it's uh, way over your skill level, go for it and uh, you will gradually develop it. You will gradually get there. There will pe be people around you who will want to help you. Um, let's roll through that. Uh, so there you go. This now playing function uh, is actually generating the indicator of the sound that is playing, okay? So it iterates through all four uh, rows and uh, it toggles the class. This is actually the proper way of changing a color on anything. And it toggles, toggles the class. Why we're doing at the beginning? Because we, uh, before we want to, uh, before we generate the uh, new sounds, we want to make sure that the previous sound column is not uh, marked anymore, okay? So this is why this part is here. I will have to have a break. Again, okay. I I very bad at keeping things short. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. I uh, for anyone who who will go through the whole video, uh, th there should be some reward. Uh, okay. Um, what I said before actually happens here. So uh, this is where the sounds are generated. So it goes through all the uh, columns, all of them. Yeah, four at the same time. It generates all the sound paths and then it plays them here. I bet this could be done in a more efficient way. And uh, if you have any ideas, I, I will welcome them gladly. So um, the project is up there and in the description down below as well. So if you have any side notes, just tell me. So this basically uh, takes the first letter from the um, sound cell table in the sound table and it puts it in the file path, then it takes the second letter as the uh, and it extracts the proper sound file name from from the um, object that we've seen up top with uh, all the letters and all the sound file names um, in there. Okay, so let's go a bit lower. We we're almost done. Great. Uh, okay. Then we've got, th this is actually the interesting part probably for, for everyone. This, this is where the um, interval happens. So um, start button and stop button, these are just uh, declared here, declared here uh, so that I can add event listeners to them. And there is the hide button. The hide button is uh, what you see on the overlay. It's just closing the overlay so that you uh, can start having fun with the whole talk. Okay. Um, this is fairly straightforward. The style display, again, uh, I should be using uh, CSS classes probably for that and uh, not inline style. This is not uh, advised. I by no means an expert in it, but uh, this works for now. I should change it later. Okay. Mm, stop interval. Why is this defined here? And uh, why is this empty? Because basically uh, whenever you start an interval, 
you, you set an interval, let's, let's use the proper terminology. When you set the interval, it returns a number. And whenever you want to stop that interval, you have to stop it with the a number that this uh, interval set returns. So if you don't keep it anywhere, there's no way that you can stop the interval uh, without using the, uh, well, without closing or restarting the window, I believe. Or maybe there is some function that clears all the window intervals, but I don't know of it yet. Okay, so uh, this is uh, as a function here because I want to use it in a click, uh, uh, in a click listener on click button. And a stop interval is another function that basically, um, Oh, there you go. We can make here so that it's clear. Um, it uh, clears the interval all the of the stop time. Yeah, stop. This this returns. This is assigning the number that this function returns to this variable that we can read. And uh, why uh, I'm not declaring the variable here? Uh, everyone should understand that. But um, just in case, um, if I declared it here this function would not be able to read this variable, okay? Because it would be inside this function, that the scoping would not work properly. That's why it's here. It has to be uh, one level higher so that this function has access to it as well. Okay, this basically uh, iterates through all the sound um, columns, sound table columns, uh, to make sure that they are not blue. As you've seen before, it doesn't really work because if they are all filled, it will not do anything, but we'll leave that as it is for now, and then we just add the event listeners. So um, yeah, that would be it. If if you um, enjoyed it, just, just let me know. Uh, my contact details are down below. You can get to me through chance. And uh, at the end, I would like to finish all the people that helped me with that, because some of them don't even know that. Uh, so basically, uh, Anyone who has posted anything regarding music and uh, beatboxing and uh, sound tables on the Raccoons channel, uh, you have my thanks. Um, especially um, Chance, who keeps this thing going. And then uh, Vin, I hope that this is how you say it. Uh, Vin, thank you as well for, for your side notes. I'm currently trying to uh, hook the sunset that you you've suggested uh, to this thing and um yep uh keep up the work guys and, and uh, i hope we can see each other soon